Alveda King is part of PriestForLife.org, a bipartisan pro-life group. She, of course, is the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King. She's just joining us briefly here today. Appreciate her popping in with us. Um, she's got the new best-selling book, uh, King's Rules, on what Martin Luther King actually said on issues, not what the establishment spins and says he stood for. And I wanted to uh, get her take on what he would think of Black Lives Matters now, uh, basically getting mad at Democratic candidates that say all lives matter. I thought that's what Martin Luther King said, what Common Sense says. Storming these events, taking them over, being Democratic Party funded, George Soros funded. What does she think, as, as you know, having a lot of savvy on how politics works, is going on here? And how big a victory is it, because she's a big opponent of, obviously, abortion that predominantly targets blacks, 50-plus uh, percent being aborted before they're born. What does she think about this Planned Parenthood news coming out? I mean, we got four states cutting their funding, Congress looking at it. We've known this is going on for a while, but it really is good to see this evil being exposed. So, uh, Dr. King, thank you so much for coming on with us. I am so glad to join you, and those are some wonderful questions, the things that you pointed out. I, the first thing I thought, and you know I come from a family of preachers, Martin Luther King Jr. is a preacher, my daddy is brother A.D., my granddaddy, Daddy King. Uh, I'm an evangelist. But uh, there was a, a time in the Bible when there was a man named Joseph, and he became very well known to the Pharaoh after he went through persecution and all that. And then when he died, a new Pharaoh came. And then they said they didn't remember Joseph. I'm thinking that some people don't even remember Martin King Jr. and what he stood for. And, of course, he stood for God. He was a man of God. He loved God. And a lot of people seem to have forgotten that. And that's why you can see young people running up, interrupting a meeting, yelling Black Lives, lives Matter. And, of course, Black Lives Matter. All lives matter. Martin Luther King Jr. often taught my daddy, A.D., his brother, too. Acts 17, 26, of one blood, God made all people, so we're brothers and sisters. And Martin Luther King says, we have to learn to live together as brothers, and all that as sisters will perish as fools. So they don't remember that. And so they don't even know that it's disrespectful to go to a meeting and jump in the people's face and scream, Black Lives Matter. That's disrespectful. But no one has taught them how to articulate a need. And because they don't know how, they're doing it inappropriately. Well, we know the Democrats are directing them and Nancy Pelosi and others. So it looks like they're trying to make the movement balkanize people and look pretty silly as well. They even go to the most liberal uh, Bernie Sanders, you name it, and get in their face. What do you think is really going on behind the scenes here, Dr. King? Well, what well, there's envy and confusion, uh, uh, envy and strife, there's confusion in every evil work. If you can keep things, keep things confused and people can't think, they don't even notice. Well, they're yelling at the Democrats and the Republicans. And then you wonder who's kind of behind the movement, who's paying them. Because I can remember, you know, I was elected to office myself. I was a state legislator two terms in Georgia. I've been a presidential appointee and those kinds of things. And so when you're in a campaign, you pay people to stand on the corner with your signs, to walk up and down and pass out your flyers. Well, people don't only do that when someone's running for office. They do it to, to disturb a community. And so you can give somebody a little money and say, go out into the community and scream and jump up and down, and we'll give you some money, we'll give you lunch, we'll give you whatever. So a lot of that is happening. And then uh, sometimes young people especially, they'll see something and they'll join in and with all this zeal without even examining what the message is. And, 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 and honestly, a lot of that's going on. And you're right, there are people who want anarchy and confusion so that they can continue to do things that they're doing and nobody will ask them any questions. And they want us so at each other's throats. That confusion. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I mean, and, and, and they want us at each other's throats. We know Hillary has yeah. met uh, with the folks and tried to stir things up. We know George Soros is doing it. And there are some real issues yeah. with the police in areas, but they're really trying to exacerbate it. And I, and I think that's the desperation of the Democratic Party, not that the Republicans are much better, uh, that all they've got now is divide and conquer. I mean, do you agree that that's a sign of desperation, or do you think it's confidence? Well, I talk about frequencies. And so the political frequency is real and you're there. But it's not so much whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or an independent. But can, are you a free-thinking person? Can you think? Can you hear? Can you reason? Can you look at issues? 
And, to, you know, if, if you keep the battle going between the Republicans and the Democrats, uh, that's one level in one place. But what I demand is that everybody, regardless of their political party, do what's right by people. And that's why I wrote to the Congressional Black Caucus, for example, and I said, are you paralyzed? Over in the book of Habakkuk, it says that justice is paralyzed. People are paralyzed, and they can't even do what's right. And justice is perverted. And so uh, what's your problem? Why can't you speak out and say that these things that are happening are wrong? A lot of time, money does it. Like you say, people throw money at it. People who are wealthy enough to want to manipulate the agendas, they put enough money out there that people won't even hear what's right and what's wrong. And uh, have you ever seen those movies or things like that and somebody wants to go into a community and the crowd is too thick, so they just take a handful of coins or a handful of dollars and throw them up in the air and the people disperse chasing them up? Yes. And then they can go wherever they want to go? Well, then this is exactly that. That's the analogy. That's what's happening. They've got us fighting over crumbs while they social engineer the planet. Uh, how yeah. positive an event, even though it's painful, is it? What do you think of all these abortion videos coming out and the fact that they're selling baby parts, uh, what looks like on the illegal market? Well, I hope your listeners are really listening because it's very painful for me because I, I'm post abortion. I had abortions. And when I had those abortions, I was one who sat there and was rushed in and had papers shoved into my hands. And as they shoved the papers into my hands, signed this quick. And, and I'm already. Uh, not sure. I'm trying to do it in secret, all of that. And then they said, you've got to sign this, you've got to do that. So it is painful, but you know, and, and there's another video out today, I don't know if you see it, it's called Call Him Emmett, E-M-M-E-T-T, -T, talking about Emmett Till, who in the 20th century, an African-American young teen, was killed for supposedly looking at a Caucasian girl. And his mother said, leave the coffin open because our people need to see what happened to my child. And so Martin Luther King Jr. said, America will not reject racism until America sees racism. Well, Father Frank Pavone, and I'm director of African-American uh, uh, Outreach for Priests for Life, where Father Frank is the national director. Father Frank says, America will not reject abortion until America sees abortion. So even though I sit there and I think, oh, my God, did I sign that for my own babies? And you, you think about it, but I still say people need to see it. I need, you know, I'm looking at it. It's hard. Sometimes I have to look away for a second and look back. Uh, David had five smooth stones. This time, the Center for Medical Progress had five piercing videos. The first five videos ripped the top off of this thing. And from there on, the videos are still coming now. So we do have to see them. They are hard to look at. But if we don't see the truth, our hearts won't be pricked. And so I believe that the videos have to be seen. Dr. Elvita King is our guest, priestforlife.org. The good news is they tried to get the courts to block the release of these videos. That's failed. Uh, we now know even more horrific videos uh, are coming out. And it just shows uh, Planned Parenthood coming. and others are not invincible. I think we're very close to seeing the fall of Hillary, Planned Parenthood, you name it, uh, if we just continue to push. So. I believe so. There's a book, Abolishing Abortion, by Father Frank Pavone. that just dropped yesterday. Uh, he's given a backdrop and 20 points of things that we can all do now that we've seen all this. So, so sometimes if you see something and you feel hopeless, if you don't have anything you can do about it. Ugh. So he's given some how-tos and some lasting things that we all can and should do. I've got a book, too, King Rules, R-U-L-E-S, K-I-N-G-R-U-L-E-S. And I talk about my own abortion experience in there. Father Frank uh, did an afterwards for me. And so we need to read, study, get involved, participate uh, in the solution. I agree, Don't Dr. King. Mad. Dr. King, we're simulcasting, to interrupt, I apologize, video. Okay. Uh, you know, we're part TV, not just radio. And the guys roll footage in the background. Okay. The new video out today is them harvesting the babies, getting their organs, their different parts, and their little wow. eyes and their little bodies. Good God. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I tell you, it's hard to see. It's yeah, hard to see. Yeah, I hadn't seen this new one yet. I knew it was up and I didn't want to look at it. And their poor little heads and little eyes. I Is that the lady who had to go and cut the brain? Yeah. To get the, uh, I mean, yeah, cut to put the them face in the mice. Yeah. The brain. That's, that's hard. That's hard. That's hard. 
know. It's hard. I'm, I'm sorry. It's hard. Well, no, you were talking about it. And I hadn't seen it yet, and then boom, it hit. Mm -hmm. What do you make of these mainly women? Your face. Yeah. What do you make of these weird, yeah. liberal-type, fake women all gulping wine at fine restaurants bragging about all the body parts? I mean, how sickening is how callous they are? They're desensitized. They, that's why they have to drink the wine, because they're desensitized. And the only way they can go to sleep, probably, is to get a fifth drink. I mean, you, how are you going to keep your heart anesthetized unless you continually do it? You know, that's really... So I, I feel for them. I, I, I feel pain. I'm sorry. I, I, I pray that they can get to a place where they can live with themselves again. Don't people oh, at a fundamental hard. level get, just to use this term, how bad a luck it is? And I, and I use that term because even if you're not a Christian, you get it. At a fundamental level, yeah. it just feels like bad luck for everybody to be doing this to babies. It just don't people know it's going to come back on us? No, people don't know because I I remember when I was young. I'm a six about a uh, sixty fifth birthday coming up, and I remember my mind was, oh yeah, I, I understand. I hear that happens to people, but it won't happen to me. You know, you can always tell yourself that till it happens, and then you sit there and say, how did this happen? <laughs> Don't you remember? Maybe that didn't happen to you. When you were sure, young. it's like people I know that but smoke that was, cigarettes and then they don't believe they're going to get lung cancer when they get it. They just can't yeah. believe it. And then how did this happen, you know? And so that is part of the human nature as well, and that's why we have to do a lot of praying. I am a Christian, obviously. But uh, what I say to anybody, whether you're Christian or not a Christian, is there anybody? Well, no, obviously there are people because they're swilling wine and talking about it. I was going to say, is anybody... Is anybody who can't see how bad that is, but obviously there are some who are still... Absolutely. Well, the good news is, as you know, the Bible says there's nothing hidden that won't be brought out, even from the deepest depths of the sea. It's coming out. I know you've got a new uh, a song out, too, exposing a lot of this. Priest Pray for, for Life. Pray for America. Pray for America. That's the song. And you can see that at AfricanAmericanOutreach.com. Right at the top, there's a music video. You click on that, and then you can order it online. The whole song, I think, somewhere. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope you'll come back with us and take calls for a longer interview in the future. Priestforlife.org. Keep up the great work, Dr. Elvita C. King. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Bye.